Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Business Coaching Secrets. It's your boy, Road Dog here with the man, the myth, the legend, the man who is tall in knowledge but short in stature, <laughs> Mr. Carl Bryan. How are you, bud? Doing great, Shoots. I'm doing great. I thought I was going to have a prostate joke coming at me, but there you go. But I'm trying to keep it clean. You know, like uh, we can only offend so many people every week. And uh, how would we offend prostate people? That's a very interesting question. But uh, for those of you, you know, that haven't, get your prostate examined because that's, uh, but but not too often because that's creepy. Right, Carl? Like uh, did your, your doctor told you to start to take a break for a while? Or? <laughs> Just, it's weird, shoot. So they need to be here on the pre-show in order to understand what the hell we're talking about. But there we're is. all good. We're all good. Let's rock, man. Is. What's happening? What's happening? Well, I've got uh, I got some good questions here for you, bud, and I'm gonna dive right in. The first one's a little bit vague, so I, I you know we'll do our best with it. So again, people, if you're if you want to submit a a question to a specificity, that's that's how you say that, right? Is uh, is key. The the more uh, I guess clear we are on what the question is, the better. So please keep that in mind if you're submitting questions to us. Um, but I'll fire away here. The first one is just I'm creating a headline for my client and wondering if you can provide some advice. So obviously that's a little bit we don't know in terms of niche or anything like that. So Carl, maybe we can just sort of speak in uh, generalities a little bit in terms of uh, what you would do or, and sort of your thoughts on creating headlines for clients. I think before I answer, Road Dog, we got to give the crowd what they want. I, th I think they all want to hear you spell specificity before I <laughs> answer. <laughs> I've got Alexa beside me here, so I'm sure that she can help me out with that. Um, there you go, bud. That is okay. not happening. <laughs> hey, so, uh, sorry, what a headline? Uh, they're looking for some advice on writing headlines, yeah? Is that it? That's that's it, yeah. They're not looking for me to spell specificity, but they are looking for uh, how to write a, uh, a good headline for a client. Okay. So, uh, yeah, look, for sure. And good, like I said, good. I, I think headlines are something that we should. Uh, you know, as business coaches, I would encourage you to explore this big time. I've had a lot of success over the years doing this with my clients. Um, so yeah, you need a little more information to be specific about it. But look, here's a framework. Um, if your prospect is aware your product exists um, and aware it can satisfy desire, the headline should start with the product, right? So iPhone would be an example of that. If your prospect is aware of your product, um, but has a desire, your headline should start with that desire. So that would be how to earn multiple six figures a year using my revolutionary software as a business coach, right? And if your prospect is not yet aware of what, um, say, he or she really seeks, then the headline should really start with a problem and then crystallize it into a specific need. So like that would be... Um, an example, and I'll use business coaching, right? So if you're sick and if you're sick and tired of planes, trains, and automobiles, and missing your kids' birthday parties, um, and earning less than you feel like you're worth, become a business coach, earning multiple six figures from your home office, right? So that would be an example. But the bottom line is what I'm trying to give you there are frameworks to go with, right? So um, if I were to give you some headlines um, that I've used and I've done very well with with over the um, the years. In fact, here's one. I'm going to be going back over a decade. Let's see if I can um, remember it. But I, I would put bums on seats. So what I did is I built a four, you know a five and a half million dollar business coaching company. We used to do four hundred thousand dollars a month in new small business coaching clients. The primary way that we built it was through running uh, what we called marketing boot camps. Right. So we put bums in seats with business owners. Uh, disrupt them. And at the end, we'd make an offer for a sales and marketing audit. The bottom line is no doubt you understand the model or you should is that I'm a business coach. I would fill rooms. Um, 
basically do a presentation and then sell them into one-to-one uh, meetings. So the headline I used, uh, announcing, announcing the hands-on, roll up your sleeves, let's get to work, here is how we do it, begin making more money by this time tomorrow, strategic sales and marketing boot camp for, and then I put the city, city of Kelowna business owners. You know, I haven't said that in a while and I didn't so roll off, but announcing the hands-on, roll up your sleeves, let's get to work, here's how we do it, but begin making more money by this time tomorrow, strategic sales and marketing boot camp. So, so basically there it is. And that, are you going to be able to use that? Are you going to want to use that? Look, it would be up to you, but I'm guessing you hear that and you go, wow, that is long, really dragged on. I got to tell you that exact headline put thousands of people, um, into, uh, into events. So, so that might be a little bit of a framework, might be a little bit gaudy and a little bit, uh, long, but creating powerful headlines is like magic. Make no mistake about it. I would go further. And I would encourage you to be thinking about hooks, both for you and your clients, like some of the hooks that I've used in the past um, that have done really well, like since I went online with my coaching, um, how I earned $187,000 in my first nine months online as a coach. Okay. So not only is that a headline, but that is like a hook to bring them in, right? Um how I, I followed that up with how I generated 250 hot new coaching leads in 90 days using Google. Um, and then today, if you're familiar with us and the software and certainly our clients are that are listening, um, it's I can find any business owner 100 grand in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. And you'll notice like those three that I just gave you, right, they all follow a certain framework, right? So again, you can basically, you know, just write them out. You're going to see they have time specificity, uh, number specificity. And notice how when I, when I follow up 100K in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising, if you say that without, you know, the second half of it, without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising, it loses a lot of its um, mojo, right? So you know, it's also um, like understanding your audience is important. Like notice how I earned $187,000 in my first nine months online as a coach. Well, when I created that, like I was probably well into seven figures at that stage, but I knew that my audience, like seven figures was a disconnect because they were just trying to get started or they had been doing it for two years and hadn't made a hundred grand in one single year. Um, so for me to go and talk about millions when they're trying to make a hundred thousand, a little bit of a disconnect. It's the same reason why um, my magazine, it's called the six figure coach. I get asked practically daily, you know, like, why don't I call it seven, the seven figure coach, right? Well, because my clients aren't making seven figures on average, right? The people, the people who read the magazine are trying to make six figures, not trying to make seven figures. And that's the bulk of the audience. And those that are making seven are familiar with it. They see the content. And they're fine with it. So, so I would encourage you um, to be thinking like, I, I like the question, uh, but don't just, I would encourage you not to just help your client find a headline or create a headline, but go significantly deeper, be thinking about frameworks. And um, I think you could get, you get a lot of value out of that helping your clients because now it's not only, you know, how do I find somebody a hundred grand in 45 minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising? Well, think about it logically. What's your next step is to make sure that when you're working with your client, the same way that you like finding it and then having it realized in their bank account are two different things, right? So the fulfillment of your, your program basically is nothing more and nothing less than putting that money into their bank account. So you get super uber focused on that. And I think uh, the world become a much easier place with your coaching. So, so road dog, that's what I'd say, bud. I think that's a good question. Um, follow a framework. Um, many of them available online. I just gave you a few. Um, it, that's a good road to head down with clients. So there's my answer shoots. So like, how about um, how to stop going to the bathroom twice before a podcast to take control of the prostate? <laughs> is, that, is that good? Does that work? Right. That I'm just, just trying to, this just spitball and trying some ideas here, right? Like it's but we're all just we're all just learning. So uh, so there you go. Okay, rolling right into the uh, the second question. This one's really good. So I'm gonna actually break this into two parts. But um, first, let's just deal with the first question. So the question that came in is: I'm feeling a little overwhelmed between lead generation, networking events, conversations, and then coaching all my new clients. I feel like I'm just going in circles. 
half the time. Help. So they are, they have put out the SOS here, bud, and uh, they're <laughs> looking for some help. They're feeling like they're just uh, spinning their wheels. So what, uh, what advice can you offer? This did coach? it actually end in help? Is that what it was did? That? It did. Yeah. There we go. I like it. Okay. So, um, Look, I'll give you an example, right? Remember learning to drive a manual car with a stick shift, right? You had to clutch the gears, the brake, the rear view mirror, the other cars, signal lights, make sure you don't stall and look like an idiot. And then, oh my God, I'm parked on a hill and now I don't want to roll backwards into everybody, you know, all the, the cars behind me, right? Many years later, not an issue. You jump in your car, you drive, you don't even think about any of those things, right? So what's the difference with the men and now, um, you know, how was the problem solved? And the answer would be chunking, right? So, and even the way the question is asked, it dictates what you're doing is you're kind of throwing everything into one basket. Even Tony Robbins would hear all that um, and he would get overwhelmed with that, frame, that, that, that framework, right? So take your coaching and place it into three baskets um, and be sure to only focus on one basket at a time, right? And as new things come in and new problems get addressed that need to be solved, um, put them into the one basket and make you know, life a little bit easier and then concentrate on one basket at a time and then say, you know, does this fit before you take it on? Like three baskets would be lead generation, conversion and fulfillment, right? So lead gen is basically developing and establishing prospects, right? Conversion is turning them into clients and getting their credit cards. And then fulfillment is actually doing the coaching, like maintaining your clients and keeping them um, so you don't have to go to basket number one, which is lead gen, right? So a little FYI, when someone tells me they want to build a seven-figure coaching business, they invariably talk about lead generation and the importance of it. And without question, that's important. But the truth is, and the reality is that basket number three, which is fulfillment, is where the log gem is going gonna, is, is gonna to come, right? So lead generation, really, once you crack it, is really quite straightforward. Um, it's a bit of elbow grease. But really, once you kind of get it, you, you turn the tap on and you turn the tap off, right? So so let's go basket number one, lead gen, right? So don't do anything until you make a list of prospects. Where are you going to find them? How are you going to find them? List them, you know, list the, make a list of people you know. Make a list of people that are advertising locally. Make a list of people on the BNI site. Uh, make a list of people on, you know, there must be a local chamber. So go to that website and have a look at all of them. Um, list the people that are selling their businesses. Um, again, the, these people are going to look are looking for a little bit of help. Uh, list of people on the uh, online directory, right? People that were nominated for local awards. I've done huge numbers with, um, you know, businesses that were were nominated for local awards because again, they're really happy about that. So when you call them because you were uh, nominated for a local award, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. You know, I'm inviting you to the local event. Um, people being profiled by local newspapers. Again, these are successful business owners. Um, you should also make a separate list of B2B contacts. So these are people that you can use as joint venture partners. So think like accountants, newspapers, uh, the magazine, the coupon book, the promotional business, anybody going B2B, right? Um, possibly that's a topic for another day because I should go pretty deep there. But understanding that those people could help you get you know, move your boat faster because they've already got the, the accountant's got 300 clients he's working with. If you build up a partnership with him and he believes in what you're doing and you really look after his clients, there's a debate to say you'll never need to generate another lead as long as you live, right? So basket number one is fulfilled by going after that one individual. But let's assume um, that that's not going to happen, right? And remember, the problem with all of this is that this is no rocket science. The problem is that, you know, you know it, but you're not going to do it, right? So knowing and doing are two different things. Um, I digress. It's so critical, right? But now that you've got a long list of people to contact, right? Like, again, don't move into basket number two until you've got a spreadsheet with 100 at a minimum, um, ideally 250 people that you're going to contact, and then take the 250 and highlight 50 people that you're going to go to first, right? So real simple, build yourself a spreadsheet and go, now you move into basket number two, right? <clears throat> so this is conversion. So two words that I've, I've said this many a times, but I'll say it here and I'll say it many times in the future. When you're thinking conversion, I want you to think of two words, right? Curiosity and certainty. So curiosity will get you the important, uh, sorry, the appointment, and then certainty will close the deal for you, right? So 
when coaches work with us, we train them and provide software on how to find any business owner a hundred grand in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising, right? So the average business owners hear that. And trust me, like if you say it with any mojo whatsoever, they're interested, right? It's almost like stealing. And remember, um, like curiosity, like you want them to say, like, what would that look like? Like they're trying to picture what the roadmap, like you've got a puzzle and there's one piece missing and you've got the magic piece, right? It's like that, that's kind of what you're trying to bring across. In fact, I remember um, there's a story of uh, two of my clients went to a, uh, a networking group and one of them, and they were, they were reasonable. One of them was reasonably new to the program and the other one had been around a while. They went to a networking group together and there was, you know, say a hundred people around in this um, room and everybody got their, you know, their, their, their turn to basically do their elevator pitch. So he does our elevator pitch. And then the other coach that was there, who was actually an accountant, I've uh, been a client for a long time, over a decade. But anyway, so he, uh, he goes, it was like the floor caved in, like he gave his elevator pitch. I'm going to find you 40 or a hundred grand in 45 minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising, said it with some mojo and some oomph, which is important. Right. And then the other, client that was in the room again was an accountant he said it was like the floor caved in and all of a sudden everybody like everybody just swarmed him and wanted to know what the hell did you do like you know how do you do this right well basically what happened is they were super curious and you could imagine for the next number of weeks you know he was very busy with appointments because the 100 people in the room you know probably set up you know i don't know 25 30 appointments and got plenty of clients right so that's Basically, so, and how do you do that? You, if you work with us, you use our software. If you don't work with us, you got to find a way to be able to find them legitimate financial opportunities that if you deploy on with, with 100% certainty will hit their bank account, which brings us to the second word, and that's certainty, right? So curiosity will get you that appointment, right? So think about the, the floor caving in and the 35 appointments, let's say our coach got in that room. Now, once he sits with them, his job is to make them certain, right? So all he needs to do, like, think of it as selling money at a discount is the way that I frame it up, right? And again, if you followed our stuff, you've heard this before, but it can't be said enough because it's so critical. Like where if I had a 20, picture I'm on stage and I had a $20 bill and I say, does anybody in the audience have a 10? I want to make a trade, right? They just immediately think, is he crazy? In fact, what they do is they do three things. One, they go, is he full of crap? Two, they look for social proof. And three, they say, yes, please. And if they miss out, they say, will you do it one more time? Because I missed out. And if they do make the exchange, they say, will you do it again? Right? So if you sell money at a discount to your client, you make them certain that if you charge two grand a month, 24 grand a year, that basically you're going to put $48,000 into their bank account. If everything goes wrong, the software sucks, you suck, the client sucks, everybody's overwhelmed for the entire 12 months but he still feels comfortable that $48,000 is going to hit his or her bank account as a result of working with you, they're going to make the exchange and that's your job, right? Again, and that, by the way, my software um, basically makes that like, you know, just adding water to your cake mix. But at the end of the day, when you're thinking conversion, I want you to be thinking about that, right? So you've got to, you got to frame this up as money at a discount and they will make the exchange. Curiosity will get you in the door. Certainty will get the deal done, right? Brings me to basket number three, which is what? That's fulfillment, right? So, so again, this is the one that creates the bottleneck. Remember when somebody wants to build a seven figure coaching business, they're, they're thinking recruitment, recruitment. They're thinking lead gen, lead gen, lead gen. And the reality is that step number three or basket number three is going to be your bottleneck. This will be the reason why you can't get, um, you know, you, you won't get, you, you won't get past multiple six figures because you're log jammed at basically all the time for money and all the appointments. Right. So, and when I coached again, this is something that I, it came very naturally to me getting clients. It was just something I had no problem getting the clients. All of my challenges lived, um, with being a little bit disorganized and having more clients that I can handle and just keeping up with it. Right. So, so do feel comfortable that there's a lot of a lot of people listening are just thinking, where do these prospects come from? And all they think about is getting clients, but with a million percent certainty, this is where you should be spending an enormous amount of time, right? So 
And, and that being said too, I want you to be careful. Like don't fall for the, you know, you do the certification programs and whatnot. And what do they say? Your client already knows what you need to know, or your client already knows what they need to know. You just need to draw it out of them. Right. Again, I was saying a much better saying than that is if you motivate an idiot, they do stupid things quicker. Uh, left to their own devices, the roadmap that they'll be following is not going to be an impressive one, like lowering their prices, adding more products and services, um, you know, doing all the the wrong stuff, right? Like you got to you gotta help your client get focused. And remember, focus is about subtraction versus addition. So again, what I'm talking about here is the fulfillment of your coaching to make sure they get massive results. It is absolutely money to discount that anything they're spending with you, they're getting, you know, times a million, um, you know, in exchange for that or times a million, but they're getting a significant return on investment as a result. Remember, everybody wants to, you know, everybody's talking about Bitcoin and Bitcoin just took a dip and everybody's freaking out and it's all over Facebook. Just, just ignore it. You invest in Bitcoin. You're trying to double your money. If you hire a staff member, you hire a lead generator, you do anything in your business, the return that you should get, the ROI should be two to one if everything, everything, everything goes wrong, right? So they're going to be no different. So again, you got to help your client get focused, right? Like don't be focusing on Bitcoin, be focusing on your own business. Focus is about subtraction versus addition, right? Again, a massive mistake I see coaches make is they roll up to a new client and they expand their to-do list. All you're doing is pre like accelerating the pre-existing overwhelm that they've already got, right? So, and remember, you know, this client that you're taking on just a day in the life, right? They read the secret and they think that positive thinking is actually going to get them somewhere, right? They're, they're trying to achieve multiple streams of income. And then they're thinking about passive income and they never want a cold call. And this is something that they think about on a daily basis. And then they're trying to run, you know, Facebook ads. And they think that's going to be the cure all. And then they're get, they read the four hour work week. And they suddenly in a subconscious level think that four hours a week is actually the goal. Um, and then, of course, they want to just do what they're passionate about and making all this money. And then they're investing in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and then following which one's going to do the you know, that's a dodge coin or whatever, you know, coin that's going to do the next speak, the spike, right? And they don't want to speak to anybody and then they want to build funnels and they're scared of financial statements um, because they're not numbers guy or gal that the, the number, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on, right? Your job is not to be their best buddy and to agree that crypto is a really good thing to be looking at six times a day. Think like mom and dad versus uncle or grandma, right? You got to be a little bit hard on them, right? You, you don't, you're not there to be their best friend. Like I wrote about in a, uh, an email recently, like upsell versus cross sell, right? Do you want fries with that? Or do you want me to supersize it? Right. We've all been to McDonald's, no doubt. Right. You lots pretend like they, you know, they, they weren't, but we know you were right. I was, you were, everybody was, um, well, look, upsell is 21 times as profitable, um, as cross sell. But, and that's why our software, by the way, will populate it. You know, we've got 497 million weighted algorithms. Um, so basically it populates a roadmap. So upsell is going to rank significantly higher than cross sell for the simple reason um, that it's more profitable. But if I leave it up to the average business owner or the average business coach to direct a business owner, they go to upsell or they go to, um, they go to cross sell first. They go to, do you want fries with that first? And that's a big mistake right? Like, like understanding what it is that you should be doing. Like when doing an offer, say you got a retail client or you're trying to sell something online that's going to be 50% off two for one or buy one, get one free, right? They all pretty much are the same offer, but the buy one, get one free is going to out pull the others by like two to one. But what we haven't done is you haven't done your homework on what does and does not work on the fulfillment side of coaching so, you know, that money at a discount, that total certainty isn't something that happens automatically, right? Like if your client has 20% margins and they make a dollar, how much, and you run a Facebook ad or you make a sale, how much do they keep? For every dollar, they keep 20 cents, right? Really straightforward. But if you go to their credit card statements, you go to their expenses and you save them a dollar, how much do they keep? And the answer is a hundred cents, right? So if you charge two grand a month, that's 24 grand a year and your job and your goal is to cover your fees and to basically make yourself free as soon as possible. Well, where do you start with more sales or do you start with their expenses? And the answer is start with their expenses. But the problem is it's not as sexy and delusional 
as Facebook ads and the four hour work week and the multiple streams of income, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you got to manage their psychology. You've got to have, um, frankly, what you really need is you have a, what am I trying to say? Like a, an element of uh, control over your client. In other words, they actually bloody listen to you. Um, that's, that's a bit of an X factor here, right? So, but when you save them a buck and you analyze those, you annualize those, um, those savings, basically what you want to do, here's a little hack. Okay. When you're working with your client and once you're two grand a month, 24 grand a year, you want to capture once they've made annualized $24,000 as a result of your relationship. Okay. Well, guess what? What you tell them is you explain that to them. You go, congratulations, high five. I'm free for the remainder of the year. That there is like a game changing move that will retain clients as good as anything else that you'll do. Because now why would they cancel you? Like, holy smokes, the guy's free for the rest of the year. This is awesome. Like the chances of you getting an email within, you know, a couple months of basically saying that and acknowledging it and having them acknowledge it, um, you know, are, are, are next to nil, right? Another thing, and I've talked about this in the past, but it's incredibly powerful. Um, you got to understand what your client, your, I don't need to meet your client to know that they don't know what their break even is. They think they do, but they don't have a clue, right? And they also don't know what their margins are. <clears throat> Very simple. And our, again, our software would help you do all of this. But let's say they got 50% margins, 20%, like 20% gross, 20%, sorry, 50% gross, 20% net, okay? They did a million dollars last year and then their break even is 600 grand. Well, on the first, on the 600 grand up until break even, they would make $120,000 of profit, which is 20%. Okay. But on the $400,000 above 600, they're now making 50% margins. They're making gross margins instead of net margins above break even. So basically, they're making $200,000 profit on the 400 grand right? So again, they make more profit on 400 than they do on 600 as a result of break even. So moral of the story, what is that? Um, helping your clients manage their expenses instead of buying the five series BMW and giving everybody raises or, or whatever, you know, like, and, and not that everybody shouldn't get raises. That's not what I'm saying. So don't take this out of context. But what I am saying is that managing their expenses above all else um, is something they should absolutely be spending some time doing. I don't need to meet them to know in the last three years, they haven't spent five seconds thinking about their margins and thinking about profitability. They think of top line revenue constantly and that is a huge mistake. And basically, the moral of the story is just help your clients manage their psychology and make it sexy to um, manage expenses as opposed to, you know, making Facebook ads what's, you know, super sexy, right? I could go on, but but just understanding. So I think what I just did, like the fourth, so there's three baskets, right? Lead gen, conversion, fulfillment. Okay, the fourth basket, let's call that training, Right. Like it's the actor that goes to all the auditions, but doesn't go to acting school. And then they wonder why they're not cracking it, right? The trick is to hone your craft. I've talked about Jim Carrey. In fact, I think what the first ever email that I sent out on my one thing series, um, it wasn't the first, it was in the first few for sure, but I think it was number one. But I just talked about how, you know, like he did the man on the moon and he was in character um, for literally, you know, for the entire time that they did the movie, he was in character. And the reality is that Jim Carrey, we think of him in Liar Liar and Ace Ventura and as a, you know, a comedy actor and he did Man on the Moon and it was the furthest thing from a, you know, a, an Ace Ventura type of role, right? But at the end of the day, he's honed his crap and you love him, you hate him. In fact, I think Morgan Freeman came out recently and railed against exactly what I'm just describing, which is fine and God bless him, do whatever. Um, it's undeniable to say that Jim Carrey is an unbelievable actor the end, right? I mean, you just, you watch the guy. I mean, he's just got something very, very special. The question is, are you doing that? So basket number four is training, right? So instead of auditioning, the equivalent of auditioning for roles as an actor is trying to get clients as a business coach, right? So it's like, how much time are you spending in the fourth basket? And that's, you know, basically honing your craft, you know, the po best poker players in the end win, you know, Phil Ivey is, is a God for a reason in the poker world, right? He's bloody good at it. It's yes, there's an element of um, luck, 
but there's an element of luck in anything, right? Think of race car driving. Like Michael Schumacher was Michael Schumacher because he was the best. You know, most people don't know Michael Schumacher was actually a mechanic, right? So not only was he driving the car, but he was able to give sound um, advice in and around that. Michael Jordan was the best and he won championships. So, so Road Dog, um, that's the answer that I'd give. I, I understand the whole overwhelm thing as do you and just chucking everything in one basket. That is the mistake, my friend. So <laughs> clearly we all know uh, where you are not practicing and putting your time and effort and that is learning how to play poker. Um, <laughs> that is very clear. So that's good. It's good to know that I can now identify your weaknesses based on uh, where you're not spending your time training. Hey, listen. Um, <laughs> God, there's so much material there. I just uh, we, we're running out of time. I can't go there. Um, I'm gonna. I've got like a list of just things that you say that are gonna come back and haunt you at some point in the future. Uh, listen though, bud. Here's here's another real scenario because uh, I'm actually uh, one of my coaches is, is going through this, um, and I used to do the exact same thing. At, at I'd like to pretend I was totally listening when you told me what to do. <laughs> um, but it, it had to do with like every week. And I know a lot of coaches fall into this, this, this primary sort of, I don't know, a sin, if you will, of wanting to hit a home run every week. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like every yeah. week I got to go into this meeting and I got to wow the heck out of them. And I've got to just perform to the top of my ability that they are just blown away. Because th when you say like the financials, like th that's not sexy. But you and I both know that is the number one and the like the, the yep. best thing you could ever do to help somebody in their business. But like, what do you say to somebody that's just like in that mindset of I got to prepare for this meeting because I got to hit a home run this week? Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, and first look, that's and you're describing an experienced coach, frankly. Um, you know, because that that's not look, Road Dog. How do you finish every podcast? Progress equals happiness, right? So. Your job is to, you know, move them forward. But I, I would say that the X factor of what you're saying, and I think it's an unbelievable question, um, is you got to get good at communicating the runs that they are scoring. You know what I mean? Like, just the reality is that success is a, it's a decade long, nobody wants to think about it. But what does Warren Buffett say? He says, never buy a stock you don't want to own forever. Jeff Bezos, you read letters to shareholders and just understanding his methodology. I mean, he doesn't do anything with less than a 10 year plan or beyond. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's, it's a matter of communicating that, look, we're really making some strides here. This is great. But to maybe bring some sexiness to this, I think that maybe ever like the podcast, right? Like what, what do I do as I'm preparing and that sort of stuff? Like I'm, like I'm you know, obviously I, I try to educate myself and I'm not pretending to be the smartest guy in the room or anything like that. I'm just not, and I'm good with that. But I try to drop something that you're not going to hear elsewhere on a consistent basis. You know what I mean? Because I'm kind of moving the needle. And I think that that brings um, an element of, you know, like, like, you know, every, I, I think it would be hard for you to listen to a podcast, like one of our, you know, podcasts and say that I didn't drop a bomb that you didn't just hear either me say a number of times before, or you, you hadn't heard, um, you know what I mean? That just wasn't plain Jane. So maybe that's what he does. So for each call, you know, bring something like a story, an example, like upsell versus cross sell. Like knowing that um, upselling is 21 times more profitable than cross selling is, is just reality is the average bear just doesn't understand that, right? What did I say earlier? If, you know, two for one, buy one, get one free, 50% off. When you do buy one and get one free, that's a, it, it, don't test it. Don't even worry about it. It will beat the others by two to one. Like the math is in, right? You know, you don't need to go and do the math. The math is in. So, so does that help? You know what I mean? Like, like bringing a bomb each time that might make him feel like he's he's fulfilling on what he's trying to, you know, fulfill and moving the needle. But he's got to get really communicating, good at communicating that these small little wins are, what is it? Small hinges wave big doors, right? Swing big doors. Um, got to get good at communicating with those, those little wins that are amounting to a whole lot. So what do you think of that road dog? Well, small hinges, big doors. There's, there's like short jokes written all over that. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's interesting because, so what do you think? I'm just going to free ball this a little bit here. Yep. Like 
when when I'm looking at this, I'm also thinking that you're taking all of the pressure and putting it on yourself versus putting pressure on the actual client. Oh, to perform. this is a hundred times a million. That's what I should have said. That, that's it's the client's job, right? Like like I've got a mentor. We got together to you know Sunday yesterday. We got together for two hours yesterday. I mean, and I and because I'm you know pretty good at coaching, obviously, right? Like I'm good at helping him coach me. Um, because this this guy's not pretending to be a business coach, not even close, right? Um, you know, he's a hedge fund guy, right? Like he's just high, 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 high level thinking that he he's always pushing me to think at a higher level. But it's also that, you know, it's not his job to make my decisions. You know, like we're we're looking at hiring somebody. It was one of the conversations yesterday. And I'm like, you know, we're moving so fast. I literally like a you know, hired a number, like, you know, people recently. Is this a good idea with what we're doing in some of the cracks in the foundation that you have found? And, and the answer is that I've got to answer at the end of the day, and I'm going to make the decision for myself and the company, but he's going to provide me guidance and direction and give me some, really what he does is he gives me some good questions to go. It's like you talk about rabbit holes on the, the podcast all the time, right? You got to give him good rabbit holes to go down. All whilst, very importantly, I want to follow that up with, remember your client, you know, um, your client, you know, knows what they need to know. You just need to draw it out of them. Look, I'm not agreeing with that in any way, shape or form, right? Like think of frameworks, road dog, right? Like mental models, real easy one is 80, 20, right? So I was talking to, um, Pat, you know, Pat works for us. He's legend. Um, frankly, a genius in my opinion. And one of the things he came to me and he said, look, here's what we got to do. Right. And it was like a long list to do, to do, to do all all to do with the software and a new, you know, a new, like a, a new part of the software that we're building out. Right. And I said, Pat, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go away. Cause we don't have time. We don't have the resources. This project is due yesterday, right? Like it's, it's coming live very shortly for our clients. I said, I need 80% of the value with only 20% of the action. Come back to me with that. Let's chat tomorrow. Right. So, so that was a framework where my mind automatically went to, 80 20 and then by the way 80 20 um go 95 5 and then go 150 right so you know you go even deeper but you don't go to 150 before you've hit 80 20 and that is a mental model that is a framework right um we've talked in the podcast recently about um inversion right like charlie munger um you know what, what does uh, warren buffett say he wants to know where he's going to die so that he doesn't go there uh, people think of that as a throwaway line it's the furthest thing from um, it's, it's, if he's going to die of cancer, he wants to know what causes cancer and then he avoids all of those things. Right. So it, it, it's mental models for your, your client and helping them through, um, I didn't help. What do you think? Yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's interesting, right? Because it's like, a, there's a lot of us that come in as a coach and it's, it's as if we're trying to be a savior and yeah. it's like, listen, uh, <laughs> That is the absolute worst frame you could ever set yourself into because they'll praise you for the short time and then they'll crucify you. Like it's just, it's never going to be um, successful in, in that model. That's just personal experience for myself has always been if I try and hit home runs week after week after week, my stress level is through the freaking roof. Yep. of just trying it's like you're 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 at a war with yourself of trying to outdo yourself um and that's just not the case like dude a lot of these like would you like fries with that you said it earlier like how basic of a concept is that and and you know what it's you can throw it out there but how about did they actually do it did they actually implement it can they actually show you where they did it inside of their business that's right it. i think that part is really taken away like for me the whole joint venture conversation, that's a one to two month like project with a client of everything from identifying to scripting to communicating to implementing. You know what I mean? Like it, it, these things take time. And, and that's just the way that I, I look at that. It's um, we put so much pressure on ourselves as coaches and, and that's good. It shows we care. Right. Um, but at the same time, don't try and be anybody's savior because. Yep. So, so I want to. So if you're hitting a home run every week, like you just went, so, you know, upsell um, and then joint ventures. And like, if you're bringing one of these every week to your client, you're overwhelming them big time. Cause there's no, like you just said, joint venture, like this is a number of weeks exercise to get completed. Right. So 
it, it comes like in the software. Um, look, we've got 12 specific, like on the profit jumpstart, where we find 100 grand in 45 minutes, there's 12 areas. You take an average business and then you take the 12 areas. And instead of saying, you know, going to one, excuse me, and hitting a home run, you go to all 12 and do like a three to 5% improvement. When you do the numbers, what happens, and I don't have time to explain all this, but the numbers compound. So what ends up happening is that, that when with a 3% improvement in 12 areas, you don't get three plus three, you get three times three times three. So they, they compound. And when you look at it, the biggest problem that you have is that the, the number swells so much that your your client sits there and goes, this is unbelievable. Like, I don't understand. We we only did these minor adjustments in these minor, what feel like minor areas. Like, do you want fries with that? Do you want me to supersize it? And you came up with that number, it, it becomes unbelievable, right? So do it, it, it's, it's small hinges, big doors. Um, it's just small, subtle improvements in multiple areas but then being able to communicate the impact that it's having with the client. And I think that's the gap. That's where coaches aren't good at showing the value that they've actually brought to the table with those small wins. And, and again, without, I, I've mentioned the software a number of times in this, this episode, but, but that just because it, it helps um, to communicate that with and for the business coach. So yeah. Anyway, like, that's it. By, by the way, if I did the math, if I pressed the equals button enough times, it's like five hundred and thirty-one thousand percent, right? Like if you if that's you're doing that great. three times, three times, three times, three times, three, it's like the oh, the ten cent per hole golf thing, right? It's, that's it's it. the same. It's the yeah. same deal. So, and the other thing is, by the way, everybody, like stop undervaluing yourself and your services. Um, it's and if your if your clients are nonstop pressuring you to hit home runs every week. That's more reflection on them than it is on you. And I look at that quite simply as what's the deeper issue, <laughs> right? Like, and if they're that desperate, holy smokes, run, like just freaking run because that is not a relationship that you want to be in. So listen, but I just want to close out, like, is there any sort of last thoughts? Like if, if you had to pick one thing from today, um, is what would be the one thing that you would suggest people take from today and implement into their business? One thing, I, I think we started headlines and hooks. I, I, again, like we, we cover a lot here, right? And it's like, you know, financial statements and going to their expenses and accepting that that's not sexy and delusional. Um, so it's hard and you got to manage your client's state. Um, but that being said, you know, starting with headlines, I've got to tell you, um, that can be a real needle mover. And I kind of started with headline, then I kind of explained hooks. So remember like the hooks that I've had in the past are, uh, how I earned $187,000 in my first nine months online as a coach. Just again, I, that was an online course that I had. And again, just, you know, did really, really well with it. And then I built a big database. Um, and then I was like, well, what am I, you know, so X amount, you know, a number of hundreds of people bought, but my database was a number of thousands, in fact, tens of thousands. And it was like, well, what am I going to sell to the other guys? So I followed up with how did I, um, how was your how I generated 250 hot new coaching leads in 90 days using Google. So, and, uh, might not be the exact wording I use, but basically that's it, right? Um, basically, those are hooks that made people say, oh my gosh, I can't live without this DVD. I can't live without this online program, right? So, and then of course, I can find you 100 grand in 45 minutes without you spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. Again, all three of those follow a framework, which I gave you a framework. Um, for thinking about headlines, I think that I think that's got a uh, an enormous amount of power. And again, the framework that if your prospect is aware that your product exists um, and aware uh, aware of it, um, it or aware that it can satisfy desire, then the headline starts with the product, right? And I gave iPhone as an example. If your prospect is not aware of your product but has the desire, your headline starts with the desire, um, which would be something like you know earning six figures or multiple six figures a year as a business coach, right? And then if your prospect is not aware of the product or the desire, you got to crystallize that into a specific need. So that would be something like, you know, again, if you're you're sick of your job, feeling undervalued, sick of planes, trains, and automobiles, um, become a business coach earning, um, you know, really good money or six figures or multiple six figures from a home office, right? So Important is that there are frameworks to follow. So if your client um, has a product that nobody's heard of, 
then you're not going to create a headline with the product, right? That that's going to fall on its face. Um, so, anyways, I think headlines was a pretty good one, and then understanding hooks and the power of them. Uh, I I can tell you that that concept has done very very well for me over the years. Um, so. So I'm going to leave that as, as something important for people to be thinking about and learning more about and maybe go down a bit of a rabbit hole for yourself. There you go. Beauty. Beauty. Love it. My, my only last take would be the way that you react and, and coach your clients is more reflection on you, right? Everyone else is a good mirror back on yourself. So I, oh. if, if I feel the pressure to need to hit home runs every single week for my clients, the question is why am I like that? Like why, why do I feel that I need to do that? And I would really be looking myself in the mirror and asking myself that question. But uh, anyways, hey, Road Doug, if I could, hey, Road Dog, if I could. So that right there is just, okay, folks, take this one home. The world is a mirror, okay? So it's this, the, the realtor that lives in a $400,000 condo, not surprisingly sells $400,000 condos. A realtor that moves into a $1.5 million house magically starts selling $1.5 million houses. Um, just when you have a client like road dog, uh, mentioned earlier, like you got a client who's like super needy, I'm sorry, you are super needy, right? Uh, when, when you find that everyone in your life is a jerk, I got bad news for you. You're the jerk, right? So the world is a mirror. Um, so you make adjustments in yourself. I, I, I talk about like buying, you know, like I, I saw a, a Jeep, I got a really cool Jeep, but, you know, just super cool. There's no doubt about it. I saw it online. I bought it off of FaceTime and like on the other side of the country, threw it on a truck and sent it over here. I bought it on a FaceTime. The guy couldn't believe it, right? He's like, what do you mean you want it? And I'm like, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I saw it. I'm good. I trust you. you know what I mean, I, that's the Jeep I want. Put it on a truck. Go. I buy. Uh, what am I trying to say? I buy quickly. And guess what? When people speak to me, they buy quickly. The end. So, so anyways, and, and, the world is a mirror. So road dog, I want to give you a high five on that. And I hope that everybody takes that away because the power of that statement. Um, and I think that it's one that people have to digest. They can't just hear it and go, Oh, okay. Yeah. The world's a mirror. Just think of past experiences, analyze future experiences, see experiences for your clients. And you're going to see that everywhere. So there you go, road dog. Back to you, bud. Yeah. And, and obviously definition of cool is, uh, a very individual thing. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Business Coaching Secrets with the man on top of the hill driving that really cool Jeep, Mr. Carl Bryan, the king himself in his chariot. If you're not on the inside and getting access to the pre-show or you aren't getting Carl's daily emails, you just want information on how to build your coaching company, visit focused.com and subscribe today. And of course, if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with a fellow coach or someone you think might make a great coach. And of course, as always, we'd appreciate if you'd rate this episode as we know that the iTunes, Spotify, and the like give an insane amount of weight towards reviews. So please leave us a review if you like what you heard. And that is it for another week, everybody. Remember, progress equals happiness. Take care, everybody. Carl Bryan built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0 to train business coaches how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. Check us out at Focused.com.